Okay, our next speaker is an activist from Devon, where she is a passionate youth worker. Here to give a talk entitled, The State of Our Education. Please give a warm welcome to Elaine Meyer Turner. <laughs> um, my name's Elaine, and um, as, you've, as Adam's already said, I'm a youth worker in North Devon. Um, I've been a youth worker for several years, actually, and before that, I've also done a bit of maths tutoring. So I'm quite in touch with sort of our children and young people um, in terms of education. And by the way, I say children and young people; it's out of habit. I'm, I'm a youth worker, um, so I've been working with children and young people for about eight or nine years. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about the state of our education and the effect that it has on society as a whole. Um, a couple of topics of interest. The first one is the impact of pressures on our education system. We've got cuts to child and youth services um, and social stigma against the poorly educated. Uh, firstly, all child and youth services, in my mind, count as education. We're teaching them to be adults. We're, we're helping them, guiding them on their journey into adulthood. And the social stigma affects everyone across all levels of society. And secondly, I want to do, talk about what we can all do now to help the situation. Um, yes, there would be a grandiose long-term plan in place, but actually, really, there are things that everyone, everyone can do right now that can help, that, that will make a difference. So first, I wanted to talk about pressure. Everyone in the education system is under huge amounts of pressure. The teachers, teachers are under pressure from funding cuts, they've got limited resources, they've got limited time, they're stressed out. And they've also got league tables that they need to adhere to. Now on top of this, they're also already stuck within the system of the curriculum, they've got rules, they've got large class sizes to deal with, it's very impersonal, it's not their fault. There's parents or caregivers um, they've got work commitments to worry about, time management, and the social stigma of blame the parents. The kids are un unruly, blame the parents, always. As I said, with the larger class sizes and the less time available to prepare lessons properly and the budget, budget cuts, it is no wonder that teachers are having a bad, bad time. They're too stressed and too dissociated because they haven't been able to get to know their students to be able to inspire learning, which is really what their job should be. Parents and carers, they've got increased living costs, the minimum wage is not going up at the same rate, and people are first forced to work longer hours and there's less time to spend raising the kids. If they do happen to have time, they're stressed, they're going to be agitated, that's not a good situation for children to be in. And if they don't, the kids are left to their own devices and they're just not trying, trying to navigate this world and they have little or no support. It's not easy for anyone. There's also pressure on the children and young people themselves. They've got pressure to get the grades. Got to hit that minimum grade, right? They've got their whole future ahead of them. And they're being told that right now, at the tender age of 15, 16, everything that they do hangs on that little point and that's going to affect their whole future. And then there's the social stigma. Fucking kids hanging around causing trouble all the time. Huge, huge amounts of stress around achieving the minimum grades at GCSE level. Now on the one hand, if they don't do well, what have they got ahead of them? They've got the social stigma, which is partly self-inflicted. They think they're stupid if they can't get those grades. It's, I've never heard anything more ridiculous. I've spoken to some very, very intelligent and interesting young people who haven't been able to get the grades because the system's failed them. And they have poor self-esteem, and they have gone to using drugs and committing crimes because they're bored, they're trying to challenge themselves, and they're trying to escape from everything. And that ultimately leads to an early death in a lot of cases. It's extremely sad. But if you do well, you go into further education, you graduate, you're expecting the shiny job at the end of it, you realise it was all a lie and you end up in a crap job to make ends meet. <laughs> the number of people that have got masters and PhD degrees that are flipping burgers for a living is ridiculous. 
Now, there are a couple of other levels. So, you know, if you're lucky, if you're really lucky, and you get you perform well, and you go through uni, and you graduate, and you get your shiny job, I mean, it might not be the dream job you thought it was, but you got there. Well done, good luck. Or you get to the bottom of either of these, and hopefully figure out another way to make something of yourself. But then you still have to face all the social stigma around struggling, around needing help, because everyone's going to need help at that stage. There are support so services available. This is social services to help families. There's youth services to directly help young people. You can get help with childcare provision if you've got if you're working a lot and your kids need looking after. They can get additional help at school. There are children's counselling services, except all of them are subject to cuts. Every single one. The youth services are being lent on by the social services because the social services are struggling to cope with what they're doing and we're picking up the pieces. The youth services have been cut as well and they're left to find their own funding so that they can continue doing the work that they're doing. The parents are somehow expected to spend more time with their children, even though they, they can't, they're exhausted. The additional help at school, that's been cut. If you want that now, it costs money. School counsellors have been withdrawn. One of the young people that I'm working with has had her school counsellor withdrawn, and it's been reassigned to one of the teachers who she doesn't get on with. <laughs> She has a lot going on at home and it's too much. And yeah, you can get a private tutor in, but again, that costs money. So the future is looking pretty bleak. I mean, you've just left school, you hated it, you're glad to see the back of it, to be honest. You don't want to, anything to do with it anymore, but now you have to face the job centre. <laughs> <laughs> And there's benefit cuts, inappropriate education programs, and by that I mean people put, getting put on their computer driver license or basic maths and English classes when they know what how to use a computer. Like they've been brought up in this whole system, in this whole world where it, where um, technology is everywhere. They know how to do it. Don't infantilize them like that, please. <laughs> The stigma against you if, you, if you dare to go and claim benefits, if you're struggling, if you need help, oh my god. Essentially, you are punished for failing in a system that fails its people. Not only that, the rules and regulations have changed as well. These days, people are expected to either stay at home or live in shared accommodation until the age of 35 before you can get full housing benefit. 35! No thank you. <laughs> this system judges people's value on their employability, even though we don't have enough jobs for everyone and we don't actually need everyone to work. What is that all about? So, a couple of points about human nature, and there's three traits of human nature that I'm, I want to discuss. So we've got curiosity, creativity, and compassion, and they're all extremely important. Curiosity is our most basic default inbuilt learning tool. Everyone has it. We have it before we know how to speak. It's how we learn to speak. We want to know what's going on. We want to know how to understand that. We want to know how to communicate with people. Creativity. Yes, it's integral to success. You need it for problem solving. You need it to find your way in the world. You need it if you're going to make anything of yourself in this world because it's a harsh, cruel world and you've got to find other ways around things other than the prescribed route because that clearly doesn't work for most people. Compassion and ultimately respect. If we're not compassionate towards ourselves and each other, if we don't respect ourselves and each other, our mental health declines massively. And then we're, we're no good to anybody or anything, including ourselves. It doesn't help. So we're basically killing all of these traits. We're killing curiosity. Don't ask stupid questions. Don't touch that. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> we're, telling, we're actively discouraging our children from exploring. 
we're putting them into rooms with boring, uninspired lessons being taught in bleak, miserable surroundings. And the kids who are highly intelligent are getting bored shitless. They're finding ways to challenge themselves, to entertain themselves. And they're doing this a variety of ways. Shoplifting, that's a little challenge. I wonder if I can get that without anything anyone know to say. Break-ins, ooh, I want to go in there, but that's locked. I wonder if I can find a way in. Drug use, let's see what this does. What happens? <laughs> I will never ever judge anyone, by the way, for wanting to take any form of narcotics. But the fact is they're doing it because they're bored, because they literally have nothing else useful to do. They're just doing anything but going to school. And by the way, in doing so, these young people are learning. They're learning a lot. They're just not learning what we want them to, and they're not learning in the environment that we expect them to learn in. We're killing creativity. Don't doodle on your jotter. Use the method that you've been taught to solve this problem. Now that just, that just messes with my head because if you're gonna be a problem solver, you need to be creative with your solutions. If you've only been taught one solution for solving a problem and you find yourself in a situation where that doesn't work, what are you gonna do? Pay attention and stop dreaming. I was always told off for dreaming. <laughs> Coming up with your own approaches to problem solving is heavily discouraged in schools and it leaves our youths uninspired and unproductive. And these bored, uninspired youths leave education with no motivation to contribute positively to society that's done nothing for them. Who can blame them? I certainly don't. I just certainly know it's a mess. Hey. So we're killing compassion as well. We're killing compassion by telling people that anyone who's done something wrong deserves to be punished. That anyone who's struggling is a lazy benefit scrounger. And that people will never make anything of themselves if they don't hit those magic grades. Essentially, we're breeding stigma around a failure in a system that is failing people. The loss of compassion for ourselves and those around us results in a completely fragmented society where the older generations don't respect the young people and the young people see no respect, reason to respect their elders. Respect works both ways. You have to teach it by leading, by positive example. And by the way, anyone who's over the age of about 20 really has no idea what it is like to be a teenager in this day and age. Technology is moving very fast, everything is changing all the time, and until you can get in touch with that and accept the fact that you don't know what it's like and you're not going to know unless you listen and talk to these people and show them respect, it's not going to happen. It develops a disconnection between generations and it causes unrest in communities at all levels and without that compassion, that ability to just listen and then approach the situation. Without compassion, people will only respond to any sort of troublesome behaviors with anger, misdirected often, which just makes the problem worse. Now in this system, it pretty much seems like the only way to get through it is to be lucky. You're lucky if you've got good parents, or if you're in the care system, if you've got good carers. You're lucky if you've got a supportive family. You're lucky if you live in a good area with a decent, strong community. You're lucky if you find school relatively easy. You're very lucky. You're lucky if there's good after-school clubs. If you're lucky to have most of these, you stand a decent chance. You'll be all right. If you've got one or two of them, you're going to hit a few bumps along the journey into adulthood. It's going to be a bit rough. You might get there, you might not. And if none of these apply to you, you're basically screwed. That's not your fault. This, this just isn't good enough. So we're living within a one-size-fits-all system. It accepts it doesn't. <laughs> 
It's a wonderful quote by Albert Einstein saying that everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Why do we expect our children to do, it, do well in a system that only benefits a few specific people? I mean, some schools are doing so badly that the parents are taking their children out of the school in favour of home education. It's happening so frequently that it's often not followed up, which essentially translates to no education is better in just about everyone's view than going to school. Our entire approach needs to change for the sake of everything and everybody. So what can we do? It's got to be something we can do. We need to find ways to encourage children's creativity and curiosity, and we need to show them compassion and respect. We need to challenge this social stigma at all levels, and I'm not just talking about the children, I'm talking about everyone and anyone that needs help in society, people with mental health problems, people who are struggling with their finances, people who are homeless on the street, people who are constantly in drug-addled states that cannot make sense of the world anymore. We need to challenge the stigmas against them. We need to support local charities and organisations that work with children and teenagers. And if you have the time, volunteer. It's probably the best thing that you can do. So back to these, creativity, curiosity, and compassion. We need to encourage investigation, experimentation, guided learning. Children are naturally curious. We need to praise them for challenging viewpoints, even if they're doing so as misguided. It's a nice little phrase. You're not quite right, sorry, my teeth back in. You're not quite right with that one, but well done for picking up on that. Maybe I could have explained it better. Good on you for noticing that there was something wrong with what I said. And then making use of toys in educational play that supports creativity and learning. Things like Lego, paper mache, science kits. I, I had an electronics kit and a chemistry set when I was a kid. These things are getting massively dumped down these days, by the way. Oh my goodness, I've seen in the shops so many of these kits that are trying to mimic what I used to have when I was a child and they're, they're boring. They don't inspire learning, they don't inspire creativity. And then another example, Meccano, all these sorts of things, anything that encourages them to get their hands in there and get stuff made. We need to challenge social stigmas. Being playful is seen by a lot of people, by society as a whole, as being childish and negative. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. The dreamers and creators of this world have the potential to become leading scientists, inventors, pioneers in the technology industries. We need them. We need people to be creative and play. It's how we learn. Having your worth judged by your grades, that's got to go. That's, that's, that's straight up wrong. It, we're still lying to children and using the same thing that we told them in the 90s. Now granted, in the 90s, if you managed to get through university, yeah, you had some good job pro prospects ahead of you. We don't have that anymore. We just don't. Having additional needs. People need to not be put down for where they're struggling. Struggling with your mental health, again, it's not fair. Judging each other as useless or lazy, or judging ourselves as useless or lazy. If you believe that you are useless and lazy, then you're going to lay around and do nothing and be useless, pretty much. And blaming people's misfortune on those who suffer it. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's somewhere around about 90 plus percent of the things that happen to you are entirely out with your control. Yes, you can make choices along the way, but for the most part, you've only got a very small, small amount of the information about everything that's going on around you that's going to affect you. Ah, 
Yes. So I was working in a pub a couple of months back and there was someone on the bar and he came up and he, he was telling me all these stories of his life and he clearly led a life of leisure and he was having to go at homeless people um, for the way they behaved. And I said to him, they behave that way out of absolute desperation. And he turned to me and said, my dear desperation does not look like a 30 year old man who is able to work. And I hit the roof. <laughs> I said it's not out of unwillingness. I said to him, in an economic climate where the schools are under too much pressure, the children are under too much pressure to learn, and the job prospects are bleak, they don't know what to do with themselves, yes, they are absolutely desperate. It's no wonder they're driven to those means. The other thing we can do is support lo local organisations. So by local organisations, I mean things like youth services, after school clubs, school fundraisers. Any primary schools or high schools have a fundraiser. It's going to help if you go along and help out however you can, whether it be donating things for prizes, making a batch of cakes so that they can sell them, going along and buying a few things, or just volunteering a helping hand. Counselling and mental health support. These services need help. Young carers especially need a lot of help. It is hard enough being a young person, and it is hard enough being a carer. Being a young person and a carer and being forced to basically grow up, grow up very fast is a level of challenge that I don't care to undertake myself. And then there's local community events, which is just about bringing people together, getting bridging that generation gap, and getting people to talk to each other and communicate. Also, yeah, when I say donations, so you can support local fundraisers for any organizations that work with children and young people. Donations can come in the form of food, it can come in the form of arts and craft materials, it doesn't have to be money. It, all of these things can help people. And if you can volunteer, if you can give some of your time, that would be amazing. These services are doing a fantastic job already, but it's not enough and they do need help. So, yeah, to summarise, everyone's under enormous pressure and we can't succeed if we don't help each other. These three basic traits of human nature are being destroyed in young people. They feel forced to conform and then all that's left at the end of it is a world that, if you follow the same steps, you're not going to get anywhere and help by challenging the social stigma and supporting local services. Thank you. Anyone who wants to talk to me, you can shoot me a line on my email address. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.